days that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. So Where's that scripture you just had up about the whole thing? Can you bring it back? Can you bring that up? Which one? You broke. That holding as in a in a, in a glass. It just, you just had it up. Just yes, uh. Sir. Yes, sir. One second. Just uh. Yes, sir. Just something. One second. It's coming. There you go. No, it's before that one. Yes, yeah, Second Corinthians three eighteen. Yeah. Go to Second Corinthians three eighteen. Go to seventeen. Let's take a look at that because I think, because I mean, just like Pat, I mean, just like uh, the bishop is saying, in this image, then if we're growing to it or have a longing for it or to a desire to be like it, then we have to have an image before us that we're trying to emulate or imitate. That's why I think mentorship. And like you say, his grandson, which I got one that's too. I understand it just left you. I understand exactly what he's saying. And and they're trying to conform to something. And it's something that they see, something that's before them, so that they 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 able to get from where they are to to, to where they want to be, because what they want is what they see, you see. And uh and man, that thing is something serious. Where is that scripture? 18. And, and let me just take a look at that. It says, uh, but we all with open face. In other words, eyes wide open, beholding as in a glass, basically a mirror, the glory of the Lord. So we're basically got our eyes wide open, hopefully, by looking in the scriptures and studying his word and having the glorious light of the gospel to shine upon us that we can see him for who yes, he sir. is, that we see him and his glory, that because that's the open face that we see in this mirror, that we're being changed into that same image from glory to glory and it's why even as by the spirit of the Amen. lord yeah. so it's by him that we're being transformed and changed into this image that he set before us that's why we can't allow ourselves to get caught up in the world and the world's image of anything because it's going to be a distorted view of him that's why he wants no image of him because yeah. they don't know what he looked like. How are they going to give us an yes, image? Sir. The only way we're going to know what he looked like, we got to look at the glorious light of the gospel. Yes, sir. Yes. That's the only true depiction of who he is. That's why he said, don't make no graven image of nothing on earth, above the earth, under the sea, or whatever. Because it don't look like me. No. He gonna, it's going to be distorted. You know something really funny is that a lot of things that we go through, I'm, I'm beginning to see that it's almost like obedience checks. Because we've already been predestined to be conformed to the image of the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So our assessments, our assessments come in that uh, we find out how well we're progressing depending on our obedience. If he was totally obedient in all situations, in all circumstances, when we find ourselves in certain circumstances and we aren't obedient, then it's more a testimony to where we are as far as our, our growth in Christ is concerned. If that, if that makes sense. It does make uh, sense. We think as though Satan is coming against us to take something away from us. Yeah. But yeah. Satan was created to, to, in a sense, to try us. He's almost like a, like a, a test. Right. When he tempts you, are you going to respond carnally? Are you going to respond spiritually? Are you going to turn the other cheek? Yeah. Now, now, and you know, in, or are you going to continue to force your way or your will? Hey, Andrew, I like I like that image what the individual was talking about with the statue because if you look at Jimmy's uh, asked to bring that script up in 17 where he said the spirit of the Lord but look at that neck that little last little segment of that there, there is liberty where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty there, there's this flexibility to, to allow you to to move toward his leading and guidance yeah, yeah. and his love and his mercy and his compassion and, and, and we're, so we're talking about discipline we don't we're, we're not trying to be so disciplined that we become in bondage because that's what the law does right the law brings in bondage what he's saying is i'm giving you liberty the, the, if you think about that let me, let me give you an example of something back to the grandbaby 
See, the, the only reason my grandbaby wants to have walk is because he's seen no walking. Uh huh. Come on, brother. Come on. The only reason he know he can walk because uh -huh. he's seen us walking. Come on now. <laughs> and because that thing, the foundation of walking is already there. <laughs> Everything for walking is already there, but he don't know how to use it. Come on. He don't know how to operate in it. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. And he's got to grow physically and in, more importantly, inwardly. Yes, if that's sir. what we only ever see people crawling, he'll never want to walk. Come on. Hey, hey, and, and, and Bishop, the other thing too about it is he, the, the liberty that's given to him to learn to walk. Huh? Yeah, he, if he fall down and don't shoot him, they put him in jail, stand him back up, provoke him, encourage him, as long as he's trying to learn how to achieve what he's created to do. That's the point is. And, and, and that's one of the things that's the problem sometimes in the body of Christ is we're we take the liberty away from a person to grow. We need to give people that liberty to grow. They need to see, and I like this part of what you're saying, that they, they see you walking, right? If they see you walking, then also they can see that you're that you would give them liberty to grow to that to that that position. Amen? Here's the problem, sir. Here's the problem. Here's the problem. This is what now I want you to take that same scenario and pull Jesus and the Pharisees into it. Let me show you something. If you start walking and the people who supposed to be teaching you how to walk don't know how to walk. <laughs> They gonna beat you down and say, "Hey, how you supposed to walk? Hey, how you supposed to walk? Hey!"